There we go. Welcome to episode 50, or actually 51, because the first one is episode zero, but uh, so 50 is the <laughs> anniversary or 50 group. And uh, yeah, for those who are, well, for those who are joining in, happy to you be messing up Monday. Turns out there's a holiday. Well, everyone knew except the one who actually planned the, <laughs> planned the session. Um, so anyway, so today uh, we have a little bit of news, uh, and then Michael is going to talk about GRPC. Uh, but, well, not that much news. Uh, we had 113.5 released with some bug fixes, I think. And uh, Quarkus 2 CR1 is being built, uh, maybe as we speak, I think. I mean, Guillaume said he wanted all code in two minutes ago. So that's what we're going for. Um, and just for those who might not know, Quarkus 2 is coming out. Um, it's uh, what's it called um, the, the, the main highlights here is the moving to vertex uh, four, which is the main reason we bump the number for the user. It should not matter uh, that much. It's more uh, extension writers has to adjust a few things, but uh, it's very minimal. Um, and I think the biggest one is probably that the uh, Java 8 support is being dropped. So welcome to the future. You now use the version of Java that is five years old, six years old? I can't remember. No, um, it's not that old. No. Java 11? No. It's what, three years old? Is it? No. Hey, Four? it's old enough. <laughs> I think we're also okay. switching to Microprofile 4 with 2.0, right? Yes. Uh, that's yeah, that's true. That is true. OK. Um, but anyway, Caucus 2 is there, and um, all should be good. And as always, you should be able to uh, put into the chat any questions you have, and then it'll show up at us, and then we will interject them in the, the conversation. So Michael, I think this is the first time you're here, so welcome. Yep. Maybe you want to give a quick introduction to yourself? My name is Michal, um, but you, you can call me Michael. <laughs> uh, I work at Red Hat for a bit over five years. I'm a member of the Quarkus team. Uh, previously, I worked on microprofile specifications and implementations on uh, productization, productization tooling. Uh, and before joining Red Hat, I was a regular Java developer, backend developer. Uh, right now, my main uh, responsibilities are gRPC, REST client reactive, and I help around in, in other active things in Quarkus as well. I'm surprised it's your first time here. Actually, I actually, I was almost certain that you've been here before. I have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, I think we, we've, I was tried, we, well. <laughs> we, we've discussed multiple times to get, I think gRPC is one of the High end or high, mm. higher road of questions, but it just never kind of added up to get it one. So, um, so anyway, Michael, you wanted to talk about. Oh, so first of all, you say productization, and just for those who don't know, uh, Red Hat does the Red Hat Quark. Oh, so not Red Quark. There's a Quarkus project that is uh, in the community, and that's the one that's going 2.0 now. now. Um, and uh, Red Hat has a build what's called the Red Hat Builder Quarkus, which is the one we put. We call we productize and we it has a slow release cadence and support from the Red Hat commercial entity. Um, and that's when Michael says productization, that's the that's making sure that happens, <laughs> basically. Um, but yeah, but anyway, we're here today to talk about uh, Quarkus and the community and DRPC. So Michael, maybe watch DRPC if you so uh, GRPC is a communication protocol generally um, it is contract first so we first have to write down so contract some contract that defines how the uh, how the communication will go um, it is binary yet language agnostic so language agnostic is maybe may like this is a selling point of, of grpc of, of course there are some languages that they don't that don't uh, work with uh, grpc out of the box but the uh, no, amount of supported languages re languages are, are, is really huge so if you choose any uh, sane language you will probably uh, be able to work with grpc with it okay so if i if i'm writing rust or P python or java, uh, java c plus plus then i'm a go i'm fine yep What's the crazy one? So like, like PSP or is that even? I haven't heard of white space implementation, for example. Oh, okay. Man, that's my favorite. 
<laughs> I don't know if Okomu, Okomu has has it yeah. or I don't know. Um, uh, Rust, I don't I don't know. If, I think Rust is not listed as officially supported, but it definitely has. Uh, some 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 uh, gRPC capabilities because I saw it in a in a performance test for gRPC. Okay. Uh, he, so he, he here says there's no list of implementation, but yeah. Oh. So, so I can't I can't do it from Emacs. That's uh... <laughs> no yeah. list. Wow, that's yeah. terrible. <laughs> uh, like when you say communication protocol, just so that's if you don't like HTTP, is that the is that what you want it's, to support? It's rather or? high level. So if you don't like REST, you can use gRPC. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about like how, how it compares to REST. A few words at least uh, about later. Sure. Uh, so it is a binary uh, protocol, and it works on top of, on top of HTTP2. Um, okay. And it's based on protocol buffers. At least the, this is the, the main use case for gRPC. You can do JSON or Avro or whatever on top of it. But in my opinion, you lose a lot of features of gRPC when doing it. So I, I, my focus today is on, on protocol buffers. And also, this is what what I see people doing in, 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 the, inter in the internet. Um, this is the main thing nowadays, I think. So it, um, run, so it runs on top of HTTP 2, meaning it as long as you have a router that can get HTTP traffic through, you can use yep. this protocol. It's a guess. Yes. The, OK, so yeah. what I don't really understand is like what why use this instead of rest like what, what's the great the big selling point uh so it is faster uses okay, less so bandwidth uh it is contracts first some people like it uh yeah uh, you it you can have streaming so it's not only mm. request request response but you can have uh client side streaming server side streaming or or duplex so so if I understand this correctly, this would be used like internally between microservices, right? Like nobody exposes their APIs as gRPC contracts, like to the to the internet. Is that correct? So um, I don't know. To, I'm not sure, but but uh, in, in Quarkus codebase, at some point, uh, some bits of gRPC uh, were pulled out from the gRPC extension to create a gRPC common extension because uh, some, I think, Google-related extension used gRPC underneath. So that's, that's my guess. But I think uh, so, some of, some of uh, like, some of, like, platform as a service or whatever providers use mm -hmm. gRPC as a communication protocol as well. I um, guess I guess I could imagine something like, Gmail or anything or YouTube mm. could probably use some of it, but I, I don't know mm. if uh, they do. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. So um, let me jump uh, to go back a bit to protocol buffers. So protocol buffers is a mechanism for serializing serializing data. Um, it is schema for, schema first again. Uh, it's more and faster than JSON, but it's binary. Uh, and, and protocol buffers itself uh, provide uh, these bindings for many, many languages. Uh, maybe I'll show you an example of how sure. protocol want, buffers look like. If you, you could share, to... yeah, switch oh, to my screen, uh, that would be great. Uh, I'll do. Do you uh, guys see my screen? You're yeah. using Visual Studio Code too? I thought you were using IntelliJ. What is it? I'm using it, but I, I just <laughs> used it to to show a protofile, not, not to uh, I guess that's all, start all, a full on what all the cool what all the cool kids do these days. Uh, so um, what corresponds to to a class Java class here is called a message. A message can have fields, and fields can have some scalar uh, values, like string is called a scalar value here. Uh, then there's a name of a, of a field, and then there's some identifier of a field. This looks a bit weird that you have string name equals one, but this is, as I said, just an identifier. With protocol bu protocol buffers um, claim to do something called like forward and backward compatibility, and this compatibility is based on these IDs. So if you have a name with ID one, you cannot change this because otherwise you will not be able to use your messages with all with older or newer versions of the of the of, of protocol buffers. Uh, there are some other scholar types, obviously. You can have a collection of fields. You can also have a 
uh, field of type of a different message. So as we can have, uh, as we have here with roll, there are some enums, maps, whatever. Yeah. So this is this is how it looks like, basically. Um, that is literally the description of the protocol. What's missing for this? Oh, can you like yeah. switch the screen? Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. So with with gRPC, uh, th this was a proto file descri describing a protocol buffer message. So gRPC takes takes the same uh, format. So you, we start again with this proto file. And with gRPC, there is a, a tool a compiler called Proto C, with which you can compile uh, a proto file to many, many languages. With uh, I, I will show you in a Quarks example. Maybe. Um, OK, I think. Uh, so, so we mentioned the, the use cases for, for gRPC already. So like services, uh, if we, if we com communicate service to service, that's, that's a good choice. If you, if you care about like extra efficiency or you want to do streaming, but it's also uh, a protocol that works well if you do m mobile devices. So it saves a bit, saves a bit of, CPU saves a bit of bandwidth of, of every device. Um, okay. You can also do a browser, but it requires a proxy because not all the features of HTTP2 are implemented in the browsers nowadays. So um, okay. I, I have an example of uh, using the, what's called gRPC web with Quarkus. I can post it in chat probably, right? Can I? Oh, you can paste. You can paste it to me, and then I can I can okay. uh, put it in. So I wrote an example a while ago. Um, this uses an Envoy proxy uh, for for translate translating the HTTP two version of gRPC to gRPC web. You also get the tabs generated with with Proto C for for your JavaScript code, but yeah, you have this proxy. So I think. At least in terms of performance, you'd probably use lose what you gain with using Protosy on this proxy. Mm. So, okay. so, so it's best where you ever you can have a native client or native like a, a yes a Java or Rust or Go compiled binary that can talk. Mm -hmm. They'll do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But. Mm, I, I don't know how popular it is in, in Android, but you can use it with Fluff, Flutter, for example. So if you are mobile first and then you go and create a website, uh, yeah. that's gRPC web is also a valid use case, I think. Uh, do you have any questions? If not, I'll just jump to the demo. We like, we like demos. Code is okay. good. <laughs> so it's, can you turn on my screen again? Yeah. Your screen is on. Uh, okay, so I'll just, I want to use the newest version of, of uh, Quarkus, newest meaning main plus even some pull request because I want to show you some really new new, new features uh, that improve a developer experience. A bit. So are these are these features going to be in the 2.0 release? That's that's the plan. <laughs> like, okay. there's one feature I, I will mention it explicitly that is not uh, in two, that won't be in two o cr one. Uh, the the rest of it is in two, in cr one. Okay, cool. Yeah. cool. Uh, so I'm creating a project. This is quite long because I'm specifying nine 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 snapshot everywhere to use to use the main uh, version. Uh, the only interesting part here is that I'm selecting a gRPC extension. Is this font big enough? It's good enough. Okay. okay, so let me create a project. Uh, let's call gRPC demo. Hmm. And yes, I'm still using IntelliJ. Uh, okay, so let me move this here. Excellent. Order is restored. <laughs> um, so, with with uh, if you if you use gRPC with Quarkus, 
uh, the place to put your proto definition file, the, this, the uh, contract for the communication is a proto directory in, under main. And let's let's start with with a simple hello. Um, okay. Uh, what we need to do first is define a syntax, which is proto three. Otherwise, an old syntax called proto two uh, would be used, and then we can jump to gen mm, defining a service. So let's let's create a hello service with a, a method called say hello. Uh, this so service uh, defines a service object, and the methods here uh, are prefixed with RPC, which stands for remote procedure call. Then we define what it what they consume. So hello can consume hello request, for example, and what they return. A hello reply, for example. Now we have to, I have to define the messages for it. So message hello request. Let it let it carry a name. Oops, string name, and let it uh, and let the hello reply have some test text. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'll start uh, Quarkus in the development mode. Oops. Oh. Compilation failure. What? Huh. <laughs> it's too, That's, too okay. moving <laughs> Let's let's add a, um, a Java package here because I don't know what's going on. But we can specify Java package and let, uh, otherwise it will be a default package. Maybe there was some like we can we can actually see what happened probably in the gen because what gets generated is is generated and generated sources and it says it's mutiny hello grpc what has the problem to oh okay yeah so so uh, the author of the of of this generator for mutiny uh, assumed there will be a package name so let's let's oh, add a java yeah. package come uh, example yeah. Well, yeah, that we've been hit by that multiple times. <laughs> yeah, it would be good. I'll, I'll take a note to uh, create an issue for it. Okay. Um, so once Quarkus starts up, it picks up the protobuf and generates the thing, and yes, Th this this was. Uh, Damn. <laughs> what? You want to clean? Okay. Yeah, we have to clean. Um, this was one of my first tasks when I took a look at the gRPC. Normally, it uh, required adding a lengthy plugin configuration to the POM to use it. Yeah. Also, we have this uh, nice developer experience that you can modify stuff and, and work with it right away in Quarkus. And it wasn't the case with the proto file because you'd have you have to you have you'd had to kill your server and then rebuild stuff and then uh, start implementing things with the modified proto file. So it now, it's, now it's not the case. Now, if yeah. you start your uh, MVN Quarkus dev, uh, the changes in the proto file are automatically picked up, and this file gets recompiled to. But that's that's not a two O feature, right? That's what no, that's, that's been the for for yeah. 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 Okay. So let's, let's implement this hello service. Uh, if we implement uh, uh, gRPC service in Quarkus, we have to annotate with, with a gRPC service annotation. That's new in 2.0. Before, it had to be a singleton. And we have a few options to choose from uh, which flavor we want to implement. Uh, there is a blocking. A version and there is a non-blocking version and in 2.0 we add an interface on top of this so uh, oops oh sorry uh, on top of this uh, muting version uh, to like is out figuring out which thing we need to put here in the implements or extends close 
Uh, so what happened here is why I, I didn't have uh, I don't have anything to to put here is because IntelliJ didn't pick up the generated sources yet. Uh, to do that, I'll just reload the project, Maven project, and it should be picked up automatically. Yep, it is. So I I have hello now. I can import it, and this is an interface with with all the methods that are were defined there. Let me do this so that it fits the screen. So this version of gRPC and, and gRPC Java in general is um, reactive by default. That's why we don't have simply a hello reply return type here, but we have a uni of this. Um, yeah, but here we, we will just return it. So let me do hello reply new builder. Uh, protocol buffers are for Java at least are builder based so you cannot just cre create a hello reply you have to use a builder uh, and let it be hello plus the name from the request and that's it let's build it uh, reply it's called reply and let's create just create a uni from it to return it okay so, and this is it the we have an implemented service. Um, let me back, get back to console a bit. Where did I lose it? Oh, here it is. Mm. Okay, so uh, one of the nice features of, of gRPC is that like, uh, it, it exposes something called a reflection service. So normally to have a client talking with our service, we would have to uh, give the client the proto file, but there is an option to expose a reflection service that describes the exposed services uh, by our server. And if you run Quarkus in the dev mode, it has this uh, reflection service uh, enabled. You can also enable it by a property for other modes. So with this enabled, we can do we can use several tools like for example grp curl uh, to contact with our server. Um, grpc is, uses TLS by default or SSL. Uh, so we we don't I haven't configured any certificates, so I have to do plain tell it that grp curl that I want to use uh, plain text, and then I can just contact on my server for example this list the services this these are the services that are exposed there's a health service that we can hide if we if we wanted to and also a hello service and now i can i can just i can also do something like this uh the oh nine thousand describe hello you, Oops! What you said, plain text as a typo in your uh, oh, plain text okay. command. Thanks. And it says how it looks like, um, and I can also call a service from it. So I can do similar to curl. I can do dash d, and then say that the name that it should carry is world. But that, that service is running on port nine thousand, but the normal app runs on eighty eighty, right? Uh, yeah, so gRPC server is separate from the HTTP server that we're exposing. Uh, and it's exposed on by default on, on port 9000. And if you run tests, it will be 9001. Uh, this is made for this uh, continuous testing, not to conflict with, with an application. Yeah, testing is what I wanted to ask you about, like when you're done showing all this, like mm -hmm. how we'd write tests for this. Yeah, I will get to that. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, I, I called an endpoint in return hello, hello world actually. Uh, that's a good moment to to take a look at tests probably. Yes. So uh, as I think I mentioned already, when we generate stuff from from a proto file, uh, we generate server bits and client bits. Maybe I didn't mention it. Uh, so if you take a look at the generated sources here, uh, there is also, well, I don't know, uh, here. Uh, 
there is a mutiny stub and stub is called is a client so so we can use this this thing these things to test our service uh, we can also use this interface that we just implemented here as a client uh, similar sort of similar to, to, to the rest client that we have so let's let's write a test with it um, it is solid let's called hello service test quarks test and um, should say hello okay so normally for a client we have to configure a host and port uh, but uh, my recent add-on that will be in 2.0 CR1 is that you can just do gRPC client and in the tests you can do hello just simply hello so so you can inject the client without configuration in the tests and then it will be configured to talk to your service that you expose okay. then we can call say hello quarkus for example oh sorry we have to wrap it in the request so hello request um, okay and let's just await for it for five seconds apply and then we can assert that reply um, get text equals oops sorry um what was it hello hello's capital hello. letter okay so hello Marcus. let's see if it works Well, didn't the, what was the error you had in the... Ah, okay, got it. Um, the error here... Ah, okay. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know what it is. No. Um, so can you just, because you're running uh, uh, version 2 here, can you just press R in the console and just see it yep. pass a test? And then uh, you can go and just break your test, just change the equals to something like and then you see it's good. Oh, what? something fit. One test will run. Serious. Well, do a rerun <laughs> in the console. Why is that not be picked up? Well, that's not good. Is, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, did... I was just going to show that we had continuous testing, but apparently that's not okay. <laughs> yeah, that's really bad. It fails here. Yeah. Well. That's 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 what the uh, steward gets for being on vacation this week. <laughs> find his spouse. Still, still succeeds. Yeah, there, right, there well, must be some. Yeah, some if you bug. open up, open up an issue and then yeah, we'll, yeah, there's definitely something we want to sort out before final release. Yeah. Maybe this error is some some somehow uh, related to to mm -hmm. this functionality. Yeah, we yeah we definitely need to see this. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Mm. All right. But by the oh. way, we had. A, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Max. I just we had a question uh, from Ma Maru Antonio del Palma. Is there a way to implement security checks like parsing a DAWT token automatically? Uh, yes. So, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, there, there is an open issue for this. Um, I didn't track it really closely. I saw Sergey was responding to that. So um, there is so along with the gRPC request and response, you can pass a metadata. Uh, so not only the, the the things that are mentioned here in the message. So this is a a great place to pass, for example, a token. But this is not standardized, to my knowledge, in any way. So yeah. at the moment, we 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 don't have a support for it it can be implemented uh but it's it's not supported out of the box i think yeah this, this is one of the things that we should do at some point in the future 
to propose probably uh, maybe a configurable uh, metadata metadata item name for that uh, that would carry a header like this. But I we see, do have it. See, Hikara says you can intercept to implement intercept to implement authentication and authorization. Yes. I guess is that a DRPC interceptor or is that like a CDI? Yes. Okay. A gRPC interceptor. Yeah, they are not at, as easy to implement as as CDI interceptors, but we have a okay. couple couple examples in 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 the Quarkus source code and and that and that has, so that would yeah. be a, a good see, starting he, point. Mauro is front back saying, yeah, he tried. I think the extract the token uh, each time, and yeah, so he's just looking. He's he'll be happy to have that feature. So yeah, have that have it automatically implemented. Yeah, that that, yeah. that makes sense. So Th Thomas is saying that he thinks the continuous testing only picks up changes to the implementation, not the test. No, that's not correct. That's it should be doing both ways. Uh, yeah, that, that that is definitely I, not. I, I, my not my, my guess is probably it could be the detection of which test to run is not hasn't been implemented for DFC, but only for the HP inputs. That could be. Uh, that could be. I'm not sure, but that'll be my guess. Um, so yeah, anyway. not, not sure. Yeah, I have no idea. Yep. Um, so I wanted to to show you a bit more sophisticated example, as well. Sure. If you're not bored with the code yet. No. Uh, no to do. I I've, I'm cheating a bit because I I had uh, this this one prepared already. So what I have here yeah. is a service called to dos when you can where you can add a to do, a mark to do as done. And watch for for streams of to dos. So any changes with to dos. Cool. Uh, to do has some identifier, title, description, and a state. And a state is an enum where that can be new or done. Um, okay. So let me implement the service. Implement to do. I think it was called to dos, wasn't it? Ah, uh, again. IntelliJ is quite slow for me. I don't know if it can be tweaked for picking up changes in this directory because yeah. Todos should be there already. Yeah, you're in Linux, aren't you? Yes. That should be they have yeah. native support. For okay. Detecting. Okay. It's, it's here. It's like I had checked it in console a few seconds ago and it's here just now. Anyway, it is here so I can implement the service. Uh, I will just use them in memory storage for now. So let it be just some map of IDs to to dos. Um, storage. Kind okay, hash map. Okay. And then when someone adds a to do, oh, I probably it would be good to also have some sequence of identifiers. So let it be a atomic long. Let's start it from one because gRPC treats zero as no no value. Um, okay, so let's we we are getting a request here. We need to add an ID to it. We have to store it and return nothing. So let's do this. To do, to do, sorry. And let's build a to do from a request and set ID to a next value from the sequence. Get an increment and let's build it. And let's just put it in the storage. And to do. And what we want to return. Why, why, why does it fail? Oh, long. Mm, we have to return void, which I defined. Uh, it has a default instance. Oh, it has to be wrapped in, in uni. But first I'll just make a constant out of it, void. Uh, item. Point. Okay, um, marking something as done would be really similar to this. 
in, but instead of setting id i'll just set to the to do state to done so these were simple the tricky part is watching for changes uh, yeah mutiny has something called broadcast processor if i remember correctly yes so we can we can create a broadcast processor for it let's go let's call it broadcast and what we can return here is this broadcast simply and then on any change we can do broadcast on next to do and here as well uh okay yep. so you're storing the id and then you bro okay got it, broadcasting out got it yes um so I'll, I'll quickly show you how it works with grp curl because that's interesting but then i'll show you some some new feature yeah. common uh, that will help us test it as well so let's do um dash d mm, there was title right dog description oops description walk the dog so and that's it um just because i see jason using being used here uh does this like interact with our regular like a jackson support and stuff like that um so what is sent from grp curl to the uh, to our backend is not mm -hmm. JSON. It is uh, protocol buffers uh, serialized so the, something. Okay, so this grp this curl does the transformation. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, so just, oops, I I have the name wrong. It seems. Um, no package to do service to do. What's wrong? Did you have code oh. s's? Sorry? Did, did you, I think you said to do, to do. So it's missing an s in your. Mm, no, it's it the same. is not. Let me list the services and we'll see what happened here. Oh, it's not visible at all. Ah, I know what happened. I know what happened. I think I know what happened. So the to do service doesn't have a grpc mm -hmm. service annotation here. Gotcha yeah okay. so now i should be able to just invoke it and see it uh, as you can see uh, as on the http request also on all the grpc requests we have a uh, dev reload so we don't have to like i don't know, refresh anything by http to have the application reloaded so let's let's add a to do now we don't see the result because because this is how I wrote it, but uh, let's let me just connect with watch, with watching, and then we will see the results. Should see the results at least. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we see. It. We could also do a bit to in the to do service to also return the currently uh, known to dos. Uh, like we can have instead of returning multi, we could just re ret return a multi that would merge merge the current currently known to dos uh, with with what's broadcasted, something like this. Multi create uh, oh sorry create from iterable iterable storage values. And yeah, something like this. So now if I uh, add something first and then connect with watch, it, this first thing should be uh, returned. As you can see, uh, I did some changes in the code. Then I invoked this command. And that's the, then this stream got, got disconnected. This is because on reload, we are disconnecting all the streams uh, that are like all, all the connections that are in progress yeah so so i used to watch and i see what was added before now so this is how you can test it with uh with uh, the console like i'm a console guy i like it uh, 
it requires installing this grp curl command but no not everybody likes like console so um, martin recently martin koba started to work on on adding this to the to our dev ui so yeah in in version 2.0 you you're, you will get a grpc tile here and you can uh, see what services are exposed here and you can also click the test button here and then uh, talk with your grpc services so what will get to 2.0 cr1 is the support for unary calls what i have in a pull request and will I hope get in 2.0 final is also support for for uh, streaming both ways. Okay. So yeah. So maybe I, just oh go go ahead, Michael. Yep. Go ahead, Max. Right. Yeah. So so that's the feature. The the dev UI is a what you're saying a new feature in 2.0. And just to highlight what what the, what 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 is special about the DLPC support in Quarkus, right? So one one you already shown was that when you start up. Quarkus will the build uh, the build process will take care of all the proto proto bar handling setting up setting up the thing so in IDE it's just you can just kind of play around and you don't have to start stop compile it's it's there except yep. of course IntelliJ doesn't pick up the changes fast enough but you know we can't fix every problem in the world um, and then the other thing is uh, uh, reflection like so DFC is is well. It's dynamic or dynamic. It's, it's it has a description, uh, but I think Hikara twenty five, which is a different person. I just found out who he is. <laughs> uh, but uh, he's reminding us that the, the the reflection we use is not using any Java reflection. It's all done by uh, uh, at build time. Yep. So that mean that there's a minimum overhead uh, uh, in that solution compared to maybe other. Well, I guess other DFC also does it at build time, right? I don't know. Yeah. I haven't played well, with, with what. What uh, other gRPCs are there? Well, I was saying like that. If you use gRPC for any other, uh, like uh, any other framework, they will also be doing the build up time. Mm -hmm. the, I know Micronaut has also gRPC support. Yeah, I don't know about others. Uh, what is so? What is what is special? Was the question? So yeah, this thing as well. Yeah, and then, uh, yes, and then, and then I, well, he carry by the way, which is Clement. That's what he is like. Says that Java does a, a normal DMC Java does at runtime. So in Quarkus, we have moved it to build time. So we mm -hmm. cut some that. Yeah, go ahead, Michael. Uh, and I think this this thing is this thing is also special that you can just inject a client like this, and it will you will get a configured client. You don't have to configure a channel or anything for the test. You will get you you just get a client ready to test your services. Mm. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of like, the, the, there's this support just ties in with a whole bunch of uh, stuff that uh, the Quarkus ecosystem provides, right? So you have, you have your automatic reload, you have your testing support, you have your dev UI support. Uh, so yeah, I think it uh, looks great. Mm -hmm. So having, having this to do, I wanted to show you one, one thing that looks a bit better than playing it with it from from the, the UI, you can quite easily with my non-existing Android Android <laughs> uh, skills, I quite easily wrote a to the application that talks with my backend, and I can mark stuff as done. I can go to oops, go to my browser again, and I see that this this was done because my uh, wow. watching is informed about right. this. I can also add stuff here. Uh, close, whatever, like the washing machine, maybe. So is this like something that a lot of Android apps do? Um, I, I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> I, this is a, from, in my opinion, this is a really good use case for Android because it's, it's really nice. You get generated nearly as easy to use stops as, as the interfaces here. So basically. Yeah, uh, you get generated something like no, not, not this one. This is uh, no, it's it's not really nice here, but it's quite easy to to work with. Uh, so okay, I, but then how, how, how did I don't you know how, how how did you move this to the Android application? Did you just copy it? 
I copied to do dot proto. And then in my build Gradle, I have ah, okay. copied a configuration for the Gradle plugin to compile it. It's a bit different than 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 uh, in normal Java because I'm using OKCP, I right. think, okay. and not not normal Natty gRPC Java thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the nice thing with the contract first thing that you mm -hmm. you can just kind of start in one language and move to the other, and you have the APIs there. Yep. So. Yeah. Um, we haven't heard from any um, contract first haters yet on chat. <laughs> uh, I think this contract uh, description is, is quite nice. It's it's rather concise. It's uh, yeah. Okay, but here, here's a question: What happens when the schema is updated? It's protobuf and it has support for schema versions, doesn't it? Um, so, um, for example, if, if I go to todos, uh, I have one thing that is not entirely the same as in my Android application, because I did mm -hmm. it with the previous version of, uh, of this app. And I have in 32 there, and okay. I use in 64 here, and it is able to, to map it correctly. Uh, I could also also easily add fields or remove fields from it, and until my Android application doesn't uh, depend heavily of can handle lack of a field, it will also work. That that is this is because of these IDs here, right? Right, but let's say like titles from string change to something else. Uh, what what would happen in that case? Like you would need, I would assume you need two versions or something like that, and. Like the standard problems that you have mm -hmm. with like schema based um, development, like are they handled in some way by gRPC or is the developer like on their own completely? Uh, so some of these field types can can just translate uh, somehow. Uh, gRPC handles it mm -hmm. itself or protocol buffers. I'm not sure, uh, but other than that, I don't know. I don't know you could you could have a just a service with v2 in the package name or something uh, I don't know to be honest yeah okay I, guess so. I I wanted to show one more thing uh, but it could take some time because uh, right now I'm storing everything in the in the memory but I could also store it in a database right uh, so I could just do MVN Quarkus add extension. Uh, oops. Um, hibernate or um, Panache, I think was the name, right? And by the way, George, just, just so uh, Clemon again says that uh, mm -hmm. there's this article that explains the different evolutions in, in Avro and protocol. Pro that. Right, protocol right, yeah. right. Yeah, I remember yeah. there was some stuff, but I, I wasn't yeah. sure about uh, protocol buff. So great, yeah, I'll take a look. Thanks. All right. So if I if I want to do some database stuff here, um, I have to, I'd have to create some entity for it. Let's call it to entity to differentiate with from to do, and um, let's extend Panache entity. And we are getting ID for free, so we only have to do title, description, and status. Actually, I maybe can just use, reuse the status from what? OK, never mind. I'll just create a new enum. You know, status. Uh, No, it's not this one. Okay. Uh, so, Bob Leak. What I wanted to show you is that well, I can I can quite easily add this. The only thing I have to do is to make sure that uh, I can execute blocking code, and it's done quite simple. I don't know if it's worth going through through coding at all. Okay, I'll do it anyway until you protest. Uh, 
So what I need is a way to translate to do to, to, to do entity and and back. And so guys, are you there? Yeah, yeah, we're here. We're here. We're here. Okay. Yeah, yes. <laughs> You're following very intensely just to see. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so let's call it 2GRPC. Uh, what? No. Nope. Okay. New builder. Okay. Set ID, ID. Set description, description. And set to do state. Status. I just so what you're doing here is now you're mapping from one to the other. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm thinking like uh, the one one tiny little problem with with gRPC is that it uses its own types, mm -hmm. and these types. Uh, well, if you yeah. take a look at them, there's to the outer class, and there is this to the class somewhere here. Uh, this is a class with many things inside. This is not something I'd like to use as an entity for sure. Uh, I don't think it, it is doable to use it as an entity. It's a final yeah. class. Yeah. Uh, so one, one thing that I, I have in mind is maybe we could ease translating these fields, mapping these fields to some, uh, sorry, these classes to some other classes that, yeah. for example, entities. But, but we don't have anything for this. I, no, I might be just talking out of. But doesn't MapStruct solve this problem of mapping from one to the other? Well, probably it does. Yeah. yeah. Do do we yeah. do, does it work with Quark as well? Uh, well, it's, it's an annotation yeah. processor, so it runs before. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I was just wondering if because if you have this here PC and you have an entity type, we have all the metadata to do. At least a very good guess on a mapping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For 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 some of these things. So. Oh, I should have have I should have should have created a live template with it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you go ahead. I'll, so Rasman asked, like, what was that mapping you mentioned? So the, the, I, I'm thinking there's a product called MapStruct. Uh, it's mapstruct.org, I think, maybe. Um, and I haven't played that much with it. I just know that one thing you do is get the mapping. They, you're declaring mapping between, one like, DTOs to entities. And that's literally what you're doing here. Um, so I was just thinking, hey, maybe MapStruct could be, like, a, what's it called, a translator between the two. But Rosemary, it's not something we have. It was just uh, an idea that might be uh, worth exploring. OK. So I think I have the entity ready. And let's try to replace this with this map with, with something real. Um, I plan to use, to use Dev Services for, for PostgreSQL. Um, okay, so um, to add a to do, I have to take the request and sorry, to do entity uh, to entity translate the request to an entity, then to do entity persisted. And then I should also broadcast uh, a saved entity as a gRPC thing. Quite similar for marking as done. But this time uh, I have to, oh, no, it's not like I have to find the entity for the ID. Find by ID request get ID. And then to do entity status, set it to done, persist it, and save it. And here, instead of creating an iterable from the storage, I'll just do um, to do entity 
uh, find what should I find? Find all. Find all. Yeah. So, yeah, so what you're doing here is basically just translating, and that's probably yep. a, a, that's probably not yeah. avoid that's not avoidable. But all that buffer code between the two of one to the other should be able to be. Uh, you could do list all. Just to do it, you just list all instead of all that. But... Uh, here. Yes. Yeah. True. That will be much nicer. Ooh, okay, I have to map it. Uh, to entity to gRPC. Okay, should work, but it won't work. Like it won't work out of the, the box. If I just try to do something like this, so oh, it shouldn't work. <laughs> uh, what happened here? I'll just restart it because I'm, I'm lost here. OK. Well, why, why didn't you think it should work, by the way? Uh, why it shouldn't work? Yeah. Because it should fail with, you have attempted to perform a blocking mm. operation on an on uh, IO thread. Got it. Uh, so if you want to do this, you have to add a blocking annotation somewhere. Oh, cool. So we have blocking for gRPC2. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. And yeah, now yeah, I, just, yeah, I just right. love how we have that blocking thing everywhere because it's a really pragmatic choice. Yeah, yeah and just for those who don't maybe not get catch the thing, is like we, we've, we always talk about like uh, the back end of Quarkus is very, fairly reactive, or fairly it is reactive. Totally and, and, and we move to like well, rest easy is not reactive and it's called rest reactive but people some users think that then they have to have their user code also being reactive this is not the case yes you, you it, can if you use ad blocking your code will look as it was blocking in the behind the scenes you don't have to care uh of course you don't get the benefit of of the reactive model that you can have we also don't get all the disadvantage of it yeah, and yeah. and yeah, let, let's emphasize that again because I've seen people making this mistake all the time. Um, you do not have to be locked in to reactive, right? You, you, parts of your application can be reactive, other parts can be blocking like this. Uh, you just add an annotation in most cases. So this is supported with REST Easy Reactive. It's supported here, gRPC supported with reactive messaging. Um, so blo blocking means that you, the request will have We'll, we'll tie up a thread and we'll run on that thread and block that thread for the entire for the entirety of the request. And just and that's the, yeah. Oh, oh, go ahead, George. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that that's the traditional model that even if you don't know it, you've been using it all this time with your Tomcats and undertoes and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's, the, yeah, because you say, oh, you take up a thread, but that's not necessarily bad. That is what you've been used to the last. Yes, know, exactly. That's what you've been used to without yeah. knowing it. Yes. But yeah. that has limits to scalability. And if you want to continue scaling because you have like so many customers, then you do have to go uh, reactive. Yeah. And then uh, Clement says there's an awesome document that will be published about the very topic. And I assume he put quotes on awesome because it's he that he is writing. He wrote it, it and it is yeah. awesome. Yeah, I've, I've seen it. It's great. It will come out soon. So that's very good. So I think that's all what I wanted to show if it comes to code, unless there's something like what I had. What that turns out, I it turned out I had to add blocking on the methods and not on the on the well, adding it on the service itself didn't work. So I also try to take a look if like. I think we have to make it work on the class as well. Yeah. That, uh, do we even have, I think you have it on packets too, right? Or was that just discuss the others? Excuse me, what was that? Can you, can you, so blocking, can you put, you should be able to put on a class to say everything here is, is blocked, mm -hmm. right? Can you do it on packets level two? No, no, we don't have that. But in REST Easy Reactive, what you can do, you can put it on uh, on the JAXRS application class, which then makes everything blocking unless you, opt out with non-blocking okay um, but the package yeah. no we haven't done that and like no one has asked for it yeah um, so but that's yeah it's an un underused thing you can do but yeah mm -hmm. okay
Yep. Okay. Well, that is, Michael. Well, you, that's right on time. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I really love it, like how this ties into everything else we have in Quarkus and this last <clears throat> example, which is like very pragmatic. Uh, you use gRPC, but then you go ahead and use like regular Hibernate. So that that's like, for me, that's like the magic of Quarkus. Like what we really try and takes up a lot of our time is to make all this stuff like work uh, together seamlessly, right? Because there's no point in like having a billion different things that if you try to stitch them together, uh, everything just falls apart. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, I especially like the code generation stuff. I think we can use that approach we can use in others too. Um, of, of having like, you have a scripter and, and it generates. You have the same you have the same conversation about the uh, API first for REST. Yes, uh, having, we, like, we, we need to figure that can, out, yeah, that one yeah. out as well. Uh, we also use this code generation feature for uh, Avro so in 2.0. So if you ah. uh, Kafka with Avro, Mm, you can right. also work okay. this way. Yeah. And I think uh, Cogito has a similar, uh, I'm not sure they adopted your same approach, but I know they had the same mm -hmm. thing of, they want to generate code, but they, they want to generate code as you have like backend code, but they also want to generate code that the user can continue to work on, like- uh, mm -hmm. Modify. Modify, but that's a other level. Okay, well, hey, Michael, uh a thousand thanks for for coming on just i learned something today that's good and uh makes the end of yeah the 50th episode and i think next week we are doing i think it's the qa episode so we will send out a tweet and a linkedin anyone who po posts a question about quarkus and next week's going to be quarkus cr2 cr1 so uh, anything you have about that would be good but we'll post that on, on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, et cetera. So we can just ask questions and we'll uh, follow up on that one. Thank you for having cool. me. Thank you for your attention. No problem. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.